graduation. So I'll start with uh, you know the importance of setting up. A, yeah. So am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. Um, so I'll be starting, you know, uh, by giving an overview of uh, the importance of uh, career objective and how to set your career objective. That's so, the most important. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. That, yeah, so that's a most important, uh, you know, thing for you. So, then I will uh, start about, uh, you know, uh, the various options after engineering, starting from higher education. There I will explain you about uh, various uh, higher education options in India and abroad. Then I will talk about uh, career in academics and research. Then I will talk about uh, different type of industries, you know, where I'll talk about, uh, you know, what each type of industry does. And then I'll give an overview of a product development uh, flow, where I will explain you how a product is developed and what are the steps involved there. The reason why I'm explaining is to make you aware about the different type of jobs in industry because that's very important for you to know. OK, then I will talk about different type of jobs in industry, you know, in detail. Eh? So it's very important for you to know that because R&D is not the only job in industry. There are much more than that. OK, and then I'll talk about uh, the expectation from industry and the interview process, and then I will move on to the R&D jobs in core electronics domain where I'll talk about, uh, you know, R&D jobs in software, uh, hardware and VLSI design. And I will also explain you about the skill set that you must learn. Actually, if you want to get a job in a core company or even if you are placed in any company to get a good project in core domain. OK, so that's very important. Then I will talk about the components and tools used in industry. Again, it's very important for you to know when you are doing your projects or mini projects, it's very important for you to use the tools that is relevant to the industry because you are project plays a major role okay and also if you are doing some courses uh, you know it's important also for you know to uh, learn you know uh, you know those things you know that's relevant to the industry and then i will talk about uh, how to enhance your career prospects so there i'll talk more on the uh, short term courses that you can do both in training center based courses as well as the online courses then I'll uh, talk about you know the subjects that you need to focus and the next steps, etc. So if you have any questions, uh, you know you can type it in the chat box or you can ask me directly. You can ask me in between also, or you know, or you can ask me at the end also. So I will answer you accordingly. So between my exam, you know, profile, I mean I have over 90 years of experience in product development. So majority of my experience is in hardware design with the DSPs, FPGAs, and process. And also I have designed you know the products with the wireless, you know, I mean a Wi-Fi. And the Bluetooth and CB, etc. I've also worked on the regulatory and reliability aspect as well, and I involve in end-to-end -end, uh, development uh, in various phases, and I work with the multiple teams, etc. So I have a master's in VLSI and embedded system and biomedical engineering, and I've made, uh, done my graduation in electronics and communication engineering. So this is bit on my experience. So now let's get started. The first and foremost thing for you is to plan your career because you are studying a lot of subjects in engineering. So maybe around 50 subjects where you know you'll be studying you know in electronics communication signal processing you know between vlsi uh the, you know then uh, embedded systems and also programming and that's giving you an opportunity to work in various domains within electronics and also in computer science okay so you have got one wide varieties of opportunities but the problem here is that since you are studying a lot of subjects and you know you know in every sub semester maybe you'll have six subjects or so you may not be really you know a bit you know uh, getting getting the knowledge that is relevant, you know, related, you know, relevant to the industry actually. Okay, so that that is needed by the industry because you have to study a lot of subjects and you have to pass and so on, right? So, uh, you know, that is the reason why you need to identify a domain and then become a specialist in that. That's the most important thing for you. So you need to have a clear career objective. This is a must for you. You know, even your campus interviews or off campus interview, this question will be asked actually. So you need to have a clear career objective. You need to know what you need to do. That's the most important thing. OK, and then you need to prepare for that. These are the major thing. And this is uh, something, you know, which uh, most of the students lacks, you know, because you're studying too many subjects. OK, and that's how engineering is. But you need to identify an area and then you need to specialize in that. That's the main thing actually. So career planning is the most important thing and you should plan your career. Uh, you know at least in the beginning of final year if you can plan it in third year onwards it's really good okay so when you are uh, deciding your objective you need to consider a few things first is that you should choose the domain you know or the field based on your passion and interest the reason is that your career is long 
So you need to really like the things that you do. OK, so this is the most important thing. The second thing is that when, when, when you are identifying your domain, you also need to see whether you have got the knowledge and skill set in that particular domain or not. So I'll be talking more on that with respect to core electronics domain. OK, so if you don't have the skill set, then you need to build on that. That's the most important thing. For example, if you want to work in signal browsing, you need to have certain skill set. So which you need to really build actually, and you have to do all these things by the time you complete engineering or before you join the company. That's the most important thing because you must have all those skills in your resume. Then only you'll be getting a project once you join a company. OK, so getting the job is the first step. OK, and getting the project is the you know the final and that's going to define your career and future. So my advice to finally student is are also that uh, they need to focus on those things. Typically what happens is that once the students are placed, you know they stop learning and you know uh, all those things they do because they have an offer. OK, but that's the offer is not guaranteeing anything. You know that's just guaranteeing a job. That's not guaranteeing you the work that you'll be doing and the work that you'll be doing is only going to defend your career. So please keep on learning. Actually never stop learning. First, you know, decide a domain that you want to work and build your skills on that. That's the most important thing. And when you're choosing the domain, you also need to think about the availability of job in that particular domain. And this is very important actually because sometimes what happens is that you may choose a domain so which has a very limited opportunity. So you need to really think about that. And the last thing is so, uh, so also very important. Uh, so typically what happens is that, uh, you know, after you know, during your campus or, you know, after your engineering, sometime you may not get job in core domain. OK, so it's not that easy in reality. So you need to really put your effort to find out a job yourself, actually. I mean, one is, you know, through campus, you know, I mean, again, you know, I mean, uh, getting job in core domain is not really so easy. So you could try yourself. There are plenty of companies in various places in India. So the goal here is you know to find out job in your domain of interest. So sometimes what happens is that you may not get job in a bigger company. So you may get job in a smaller company where you know the salary could be very less. OK, compared to what you are offered, you know, in the campus and so on. So you should not uh, look at the salary and look at uh, which company you are joining. That's not important. What is more important is that uh, the projects and the technology that you will be working because that is going to defend your career. So it's very important for you to find job in your domain of interest. And when you are finding a job, you know, you should never look at your salary and the company says because th those are not important at all because you know your career growth is purely depending on the technical skills. Once you have gained, you know, say two plus years of experience, you can move to any companies. And if you take a core electronics domain, that's the best domain to work because your career is ever, you know, very long in that case, actually not like a known IT domain where, you know, it's short. No short uh, career actually. This is really long, say 25, 30 years and so on. Okay, so it's very important, you know, for you to plan your career where you know you need to have a clear career objective, then learn the skill set and also try your best to find out the jobs in that domain. Okay, so you need to put a lot of effort in that. It's not that easy, but you know, you know once you put the effort and you have the knowledge, definitely you'll get the job in code domain. Okay. So now let us talk about our different options after engineering. After engineering, you can go for higher studies. I'll tell you that soon. Now you can go for jobs where you can work in industry or you can work in academics or research or you can start your own company. So these are the various options. So first I'll focus on higher education. So you have a two options after engineering. One is you can go for a MBA. I will tell you later where MBA is useful. But if you want to work in R&D as a design engineer, never do MBA as a fresher. It will not help you at all. Doing ME is highly beneficial because most of the product companies consider, you know, ME as experience. And if you want to work in core domain, you know, it's always good to have master's degree, so especially especially in the domain like signal processing or VLS. Yeah. So because you know whatever you are learning in engineering that is not sufficient enough you know to work on it because if you take signal processing for example you are studying hardly two subjects in engineering and that is not enough you know really if you want to work whereas if you do a mean signal processing you know you'll be specializing in uh, deep into signal processing you know for various kind of applications and that that is even beneficial for the company that is the reason why me is considered as experience you know in product companies okay so if you have me you'll be recruited at a senior grade with a much higher salary so doing me is highly beneficial if you want to work in core domain 
you know when they in r and d okay so you can also do me you know when you're working for example bits plan etc is offering work learning mtech programs which you could do okay so that's highly beneficial for your uh, long term career growth okay so further you can go for phd if you're interested in you know, and uh, academics or research and further you can also do postdoctoral fellowship etc you know in uh, various um, you know uh, various uh, you know labs or colleges etc okay now let us uh, focus a bit on the higher education in engineering in India. So you have a different type of master's degree uh, like ME or MTech and also research master's degree. The difference between these two are in research master's degree, the focus is more on the, more on the research thesis, whereas in ME or MTech, you'll be studying about uh, 10 plus theory subjects and you'll have some practicals and dissertation, etc. Both are fine. I mean, you can choose which one you like to do industry treat both are equal so if you want to go for higher education you need to prepare for gate exam that's very important now the specialization as i told you in the beginning as an electronics engineering graduate you can do me in various specialization computer science and also electronics that means you have got wide varieties of opportunities so now the most important thing is that you, you know you need to choose your specialization okay for that you need to have a career objective that is the reason why career objective is again very important without having career objective you cannot choose your specialization okay so for example you know you want to work in a vlsa domain and if you do a mean signal processing for example it won't help you much or vice versa okay because you know the focus is different there so you should choose your specialization based on your career objective and when you choose the course you know you also need to go through the syllabus you need to know what you will be learning that's very important and the second thing is that you need to also see the college infrastructure and lab facility that's again very important because you need to you know do a lot of projects actually for that you need to have the tools and the, you know the boards and so on actually so it's very important okay so choose the specialization based on your uh, career objective that's very important eh? because many times I mean, what i've seen is that you know sometimes students may choose some domain and then work in some other domain you know that won't be beneficial for you so choose it you know i mean there are plenty of uh, you know specialization available suppose you want to work in machine learning of course you can do i mean a and ml or computer science and so on actually okay you can also do a masters in abroad so i've considered all these countries based on the availability of job in core electronics domain you can do masters in america and various countries in europe and also in asia pacific region okay so if you want to go for higher education abroad you need to prepare from third year onwards because you need to have a good uh, score in english exams like ilts and TOEFL. that's mandatory and if you want to go to us you also need to prepare for gra so these are the basic requirements huh? so but these universities will also look into your skill set the projects that you have done and also the papers you publish in journals like ieee and so on so you need to focus on that things I've also, you know, but that, that because that's very important for you to get this scholarship actually. OK, so next is, you know, choosing the country. So choose your country based on your specialization, because if you are taking, you know, I mean, if you want to go to certain countries, you need to know actually what are the different type of industries available there and what kind of work and research is going on there. That's very important actually. OK, so you need to really, you know, study about the country. You can do Google search. You will get a lot of information on various countries and then, you know, you can choose the country. Then you need to choose the university. So so you need to see the, you know, uh, the research facilities available there and you can, you know, choose these universities accordingly. So that's very important. You can find a lot of information from study portals. This is the best site for higher education abroad and find us another site where you'll get a lot of information. So I mean, so, I mean, going to you know, US for masters is becoming more and more difficult nowadays because of you know stringent visa rules. So you could always you know think about going to Europe because in Europe you have got equal opportunities compared to US as well. But getting visa is much easier. And also, if you work in you know study in Europe in one country, you can work in other countries easily. And there are plenty of jobs available in various domains in electronics. Okay. Say for example, you know, you want to specialize in signal processing, you know, so then, you know, Denmark is the best country, you know, to go actually. Because there are a lot of companies, you know, and they work a lot on signal processing actually. So you need to really see, yeah, or if you want to work in IC design, you know, you, need, you can go to France for masters actually. There are a lot of semiconductor companies. So you need to really, you know, choose the countries, you know, wisely. You know, because, you know, sometimes, you know, they, they will have a collaborative project and all. It's not like in India, actually. So they do really nice work where you get a chance to work, you know, you know, with the various industries and that will really help you, actually. OK, so now let us uh, talk about the career in academic and research. So if you are interested in teaching, you need to do ME. 
that's a minimum qualification you need to have to get job in an engineering college as assistant professor and nowadays a lot of you know universities colleges or research labs are offering roles like project associate or research associate etc these are really good roles where you know you get a good exposure you know in various domains and that is highly beneficial if you want to work in a product company okay so if you don't get job in your domain of interest it's always good to look into this kind of jobs where you could work you know say for a few years say one to two years and you know then you can easily move to industry or you can move to academics after doing ma okay so this is also a nice opportunity so you could explore actually i mean it's offered in various like you know for example tafr and sometime in nits or you know even where you know even coip and various colleges huh? so you could easily find out that and you know you could uh, you know these are typically two year roles where you know you get a chance to work on some projects where you know you can improve your technical knowledge and you know that will be beneficial you know if you are going to a product company okay so now let us talk about different type of industry so it's very important for you to know what each type of industry does i hope all of you are aware what is it service company they don't develop any product they do different kind of work they do software development they do a lot of documentation kind of work quality uh, kind of work and also they work in core electronics domain so almost all it companies work in um let's say core domains like embedded software and hardware vlsi design signal processing and so on okay but the most important thing that again you need to understand here is that uh but you know only uh, very less students will get a chance to work in core um, you know electronics projects actually so you need to have the right skill set in your resume so what typically happens is that during your campus interview i mean um, uh, you know you, your uh, overall knowledge will be evaluated and once you join in the in a company they will uh, you know go through your resume again and they will allocate the projects based on your skill set in the resume okay so that again that is the reason why i'm telling you find your students never stop learning Okay, because that will be the biggest mistake you'll be making. And when you don't have the right skills in your year, assume you won't be getting a good project. Okay, and that will affect your career in long term. Okay, so because project is going to define your career, not the job. Okay, so we need to really, you know, learn those things. Okay, so then you have a product companies where we design the products, manufacture it, we sell it, and we support the customers. These are the best companies to work to, like, together with the semiconductor companies because you get end to end exposure. That's very important if you want to work in. R&D. Okay, so then you have electronics manufacturing services. So most of the uh, product companies outsource some part of their uh, manufacturing to these companies. Uh, for example, you know, when maybe outsource the PCB, you know, uh, assembly or you know even complete manufacturing. Yeah? So for example, you know, you might have heard that Apple started manufacturing their iPhones in India, right? So there are a lot of companies. For example, Jabil is in Pune in Chakan, you know, where uh, you know they do the manufacturing services for a lot of companies and also. to manufacture a product or the pcbs you know you need to also do a lot of testing actually so they develop the test tools and other things and also most of these companies do design services for various companies okay so these are also really nice companies to work because you get a lot of knowledge there okay then you have a semiconductor companies so where they design ic manufacture it sell it and they support the customers and also they develop the you know various kind of application softwares and algorithms and also the hardware evaluation boards etc for various applications and for various customers they also develop the tools like uh, code composer studio for texas instrument dsp or processors or you know Uh, selling size is a reward for the fpgs etc so these are nice companies so almost all the semiconductor companies across the world has got r&d centers in india and majority of them in bangalore then you have product certification company so if you look at your laptop charger or mobile phone charger you can see a lot of markings like a c u l f c right these markings are mandatory for you to sell product anywhere in the world and these markings are ensuring that the product is safe to use okay so there are a lot of certification companies where you know you have to take your product to perform the testing so for for example there are companies like ultv and all okay so um, majority of them in bangalore where they do this testing and also you have uh, it companies like vipro and hcl they are also into testing okay so if you suppose if you get job in vipro or hcl and if you have good knowledge in electronics probably they may put you there okay and uh, central government you have uh, samir in mumbai and uh, chennai and so on and also uh, ari in pune where they do this kind of testing and ettc and ct again in pune and various cities in india so these are also companies where you could try in uh, testing and regulatory 
Okay, then you have a government organization. So uh, there are two kinds of government organization. One is research organizations like ISRO, DRDO, where they do a lot of research work. But to get job here, you need to have a high gate score. That's very important. So the advantage of working in the research organization is one is you know that you get a chance to work on cutting edge technology. The second advantage is that most of the time you know they will sponsor your MTech in IIT or Indian Institute of Science, etc. So that's highly beneficial in long term. And then you have other government organizations like uh, BSNL, railways, etc., where there is no design at all. It's only testing and maintenance. So, you know, if you, you are interested in that kind of job, you could definitely try. OK, so these are the various type of industries you know, available. OK, so you could try whichever you wish to. OK. So, but generally, you know, work, you know, if you are interested in design, OK, so it's go, always good to work in a product company, electronics manufacturing or semiconductor company because you got really good exposure. OK. So now I'll tell you about the product development flow. So this is the process that we follow while we develop a product. It is applicable for any kind of product development, electronics, mechanical, electrical, anything. OK, so the reason why I'm explaining is first to make you aware how product is developed and what are the steps involved there. By doing that, you know, you will get a better understanding about different type of jobs. OK, so this is the complete process that we follow to develop a product and it is done only in a product company or a semiconductor company, the complete phases. In other companies, you do only part of it actually. So that is the reason why I'm telling you working in these two companies, uh, type of companies will improve your knowledge. OK, and this is a continuous process. You can, you know, it's like a wheel. You keep on moving like you develop a product. You manufacture it, you sell it, then you have to support the customers. Then based on the compliance, you know, you have to improve the quality of your product, maybe add new features and you know, relaunch the product as a facelift version of a product. Okay, so it's a continuous activity. So you start your product development at a product initiation phase. This is the phase you decide to start your product development. Okay, so once you decide to start your product development, you need to do two things. One is that you need to do customer survey and market research study that will be done by the sales and marketing engineers. So it's very important for us to, uh, you know, uh, do the both of these things. The reason is that we, you know, whatever product we are developing, you know, we need to ensure that the product fulfills whatever customer wants. Okay, so we need to ensure, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you need to ensure uh, that uh, the product that we are developing, you know, it's fulfilling the customer requirement. The second thing is that, uh, uh, the, you know, we need to also do uh, the uh, market research study to understand, you know, the competitors products, their features, specification and performance, etc. Because when we are developing a product, we need to ensure that the product that we are de developing is equal or better than the competitors. Okay, otherwise nobody is going to buy. For example, if you want to buy a mobile phone, Naturally, you compare, you know, the specification and features of various fonts available and then you choose the one, right? Same way when we are developing, we need to do those things. That's mandatory actually. OK, so once you have done all this, the, both is, uh, you know, um, in a survey, you will get a lot of ideas. So from that, you know, you can decide, you know, what you need to have in your uh, product actually. So the, then you will go to the concept definition phase and this is the phase where we need to do the technical feasibility study. Because you know now you know you have got a lot of details. You know what a customer want and you know, you know what competitors are offering. So we need to see whether you know it's possible for us to do technically. So sometimes what happens is that you know some concept may be difficult to implement. OK, so it may take too much time or the cost to implement is also high. Uh, for example, you know to implement that you may require a high end processes. Uh, so the process may be expensive or even the development tools will be expensive. So we need to drop some of them actually so that's a way you know that is all done in the done in the concept definition phases so typically we use matlab and simulating a lot here because the objective here is to prove the concept and see the feasibility actually okay so once uh, you know you know the concept is also then you will define the final specification of your product and then you will go for the system design okay so this is where you will actually start the designing of the product the first step is you know to define the architecture of the product in the architecture you'll have to identify the major building blocks like uh, processes you know the power supplies and various kind of interfaces and so on okay and when you are defining the architecture of the product you need to consider the future requirement as well so, uh, for example you know um, uh, you are choosing a processor you should see whether the processor that you are you know choosing is supporting the current requirement and also we need to think about the future requirement otherwise what happens is that i suppose you know i you know if your uh, processor you know 
So if your processor, uh, you know, when need a larger memory interface or the processing capability for a, a new application, and uh, if that doesn't support your current processor, then you have to change the processor. OK, so that's a redesign and it's a major change. So, you know, we should avoid such things. So we should always think about the future requirements while we are considering each and every building blocks in the architecture so that, you know, you can quickly do that in the future. That's very important. OK, so that's done in the architecture design and then you will go for the actual design. So you will form different groups like hardware engineers, software engineers and mechanical engineers. The job of a hardware engineer is to do the circuit design, select the components, do the circuit simulation and get the PCB layout done and also get the PCB done and get the components assembled etc okay same way the software engineers will do various kind of software development and once the software is developed you know they will uh, initially test in the evaluation boards till the hardware is available and mechanical when, once the hardware is available they will test in the hardware now and same way mechanical engineers will do the mechanical design like enclosure design thermal design etc OK, so once uh, once you know, I mean uh, the prototype is done, um, you know, the uh, design engineers will do the initial level testing. Eh? So the, they will do the testing and if they find any issues, they will look into those issues and they will fix these problems. OK, and after that, uh, the product will move to the uh, prototype will move to the testing and validation phase. So this is an important phase in every company. There is separate testing and verification team. Their job is to do the testing. For example, they do. Uh, functional testing uh, to, to, to test your product. You know they need to also develop some test jig or automation setup and uh, even test software, hardware. All those things are needed. So, uh, so test engineers will develop these things, or sometime you know R and D engineers will also support you know in developing these things. And after that, they will do the functional testing of the product. And if they find any issues, they will report these issues to the R&D team and the design engineers will look into these issues and they will find out the root cause and fix it. After that, we will go for the reliability testing and third is regulatory testing. So reliability testing is an important test because if the product is not reliable, it has got a lot of implication. The first thing is that, you know, um, your uh, you know, market share will be getting impacted and also, you know, the company's image will go. OK, so the second thing is that you will have financial loss because you have to replace the parts or even the products under warranty and the third thing is that sometimes it can even cause uh, legal issues as well for example you take an automotive huh? so in case of an accident if the airbag is not deploying and you know if something happens to the passenger for example then you know company has to pay the compensation and you know even because sometimes government also may take legal action against them so it's very important for the, you know any product company to do the reliability test to find out the problems early in the design. So when we design a product, we consider various things in the, you know, with respect to the reliability. And also we need to prove it actually by doing the testing. So reliability testing is a stress test where we will make the system fail. OK, so we will uh, stress the system much beyond its in normal use case. We'll make it fail so that we know how long the system is going to work and problems, you know, that we are going to face. OK, so by once you understand these issues and once you fix it, we can at least ensure that, you know, the chance of, you know, the failure in the field can be reduced significantly. That's very important and that's the purpose of doing this testing. So we do three kind of testing here. One is extended temperature test, humidity and vibration test. OK. So in the extended temperature test, you know, we will stress your system, say maybe uh, typically consumer product, you know, you may test your system, say from minus 20 to 90 degree, and then we will uh, monitor the performance of the system functionality and also monitor a lot of signals. Okay, during this uh, testing, you will find some problems. So sometimes what can happen is that, uh, you know, your output uh, may fluctuate a lot and sometimes system may not work after certain tem temperature or, you know, sometimes the system performance will be totally different. Than expected. Okay, so then we need to analyze each of that. So typically, you know, uh, during this testing, you will find the uh, variation in the output and also the functionality. So sometimes system may not function the way it has to function. So we need to find out the root cause and fix it. So typically, the reason is that you know, as you all know, the electronics component, uh, you know, uh, its operation, uh, you know, behavior changes with the temperature. For example, you take an op amp. You know the offset voltage changes with temperature, or you take an ADC or DAC. The, the you know errors will change actually. So due to these variations in the temperature, your output will fluctuate, and that will affect the performance of your product. So we need to fix that actually. So we can fix that you know uh, by various ways. First is you know you can fix it by choosing a competent with a lower tolerance. Second is that you know you can use you know design some compensation circuit to compensate the error. Third thing is that you can do it into software 
by monitoring the internal temperature and you know you can compensate the final output okay so these are the various things that we do and sometimes the system stop functioning so we need to see why you know why that happens actually so sometimes system may stop functioning temporary temporary yeah? so they've been because of most of these ic's has got thermal cut off actually so it will cut off and once you know the temperature is back to normal it will work so we need to really analyze that is it acceptable and sometimes it happens that you know some components may fail actually so we need to analyze that so the typical uh, reason for failure could be due to the power dissipation because the power dissipation of a component is proportional to the ambient temperature and if the ambient temperature goes up uh, the component will become really hot and if you don't have good cooling mechanism or heating etc then the component will fail. So we need to improve the thermal design. That's very important actually. OK, so by doing this testing, we'll get to know the problem so that we can improve our design. Next is humidity test. This is an, again an important test because we need to test your system at a different humidity level where you know we can uh, you know see the uh, you know, the performance actually because humidity will cause condensation and that will cause uh, formation of water droplet and that could enter into your system and can cause short circuit, etc. OK. So we need a better enclosure design here. Third is a vibration test. This is an important test actually because you know any product you take, you know, it has to undergo various uh, you know environmental conditions. So you take the example of a you know a car, you know, it has to run on different uh, type of roads, you know. So I mean, many time you know it will uh, happen that you know car will uh, start shaking, etc. But in the car you take, you know, you have a lot of components actually and many of them are connected through different cables and you know assembled etc and due to vibration sometime you know some components may come out or you know sometime you some cables may come out and that will cause your system stop working actually right so we need to find out this thing so you know this testing you know you will find out you know the problems in the assembly cabling etc so if you find any problems we can fix it if, suppose if you know any components are coming out we can fix that by improving the mounting mechanism or you know some cables are com coming out you can choose a component with a better locking mechanism okay so by doing the reliability testing you know you are finding out the weakness in your system so that you can improve it so that's why it's very important actually to do the testing OK, for example, if you visit ARI in Pune, you know, you can witness this kind of testing. It's really good to know that. OK, so the next is uh, uh, regulatory testing. So this is very important without uh, doing the regulatory testing and, you know, meeting the regulatory requirements, you cannot have your product. OK, so in the regulatory testing, we do three kind of testing. Typically, one is electromagnetic compatibility testing, safety testing and environmental testing. So in the environmental testing, you know the goal is you know to test the system functionality in different temperature and humidity conditions. So here you have to take your system to various regulatory labs where they will perform this testing. Okay. So the, the you know the, the you know the goal here is you know to ensure the consistent performance of your system at a different temperature. For example, you have a, a camera. So uh, the camera performance should be same at a 10 degree or at 45 degree. So that's a goal here. Okay. So they will test for that. And the second is safety testing. Yeah, there's an important test. So the goal of safety testing is to ensure that the system is safe to use. Suppose if there is any failure happens in the system, that should not cause any hazard to the user or to the environment. For example, if short circuit happens in the TV, yeah, so TV should not catch fire or if you touch the TV, you know, you should not get burned or shock, whatever it is. So that's a goal of this test. Okay. So what they do is that they will create the failures in your system and they will monitor the temperature and uh, you know, I mean, and they will see, you know, whether there are any fire fumes and so on actually. Okay. So the goal is, you know, uh, to prove that your system is safe and also has got a lot of safety mechanism in place. That's the main goal here. For example, during this testing, you will short circuit. Okay. So what happened typically happens is that your fuse should blow. But sometimes what will happen is that instead of say 16 ampere fuse, if you say 63 ampere fuse, the fuse will not get open immediately and that will cause, uh, you know, your system uh, or the components getting hot and, you know, eventually getting a fire, etc. Okay, so all those things are tested there. And the next test is electromagnetic compatibility. This is the most complex and toughest one actually, where the first uh, the test what we do is that we will measure the radiated and conduct animation from the system. That's very important to know that. So this has to be within the given specification. Okay, so every system will limit in electromagnetic waves either through radiation and conduction so it has to be within the given specification otherwise it could 
pollute the power supply and affect the operation of other equipment or it could affect the operation of neighboring equipment. So that's the main goal here. Next is immunity test because the system has to be immune. In the past, you might have noticed the older CRT TVs. Whenever you turn on the mixer grinder or the motors, etc., you see a lot of disturbance like lines on the TV monitor, right? That's, these are caused by the electromagnetic interference. So we need to ensure that our system is immune to that. That's the reason why we do that. So we add a lot of inject non noise to the power supply and we see how the system behaves. That's the reason why we need to have some electromagnetic interference filters like uh, LC filters, which will filter out these noises or we also need to have uh, you know, a lot of shielding, etc. Uh, to prevent from the, uh, uh, the you know, radiated uh, you know, noise actually. For example, they will emit hyper electromagnetic waves towards your system and see the performance. OK, then we do electrostatic discharge and you know the volume fluctuation kind of testing so you can you know so if you want to see such kind of testing you could visit you know probably ARI or Samir in Kargar where you know they do those things so these are all very important for you to know that okay and once your product passes all this testing you will get a test report then you can go to different countries regulatory authorities and get your product certified okay so once uh, the product is certified or you after you complete the test you will go for the manufacturing the reason why we are waiting till that is that typically what happens is that during the testing you will find a lot of failures and that will call for redesign it can be you know enclosure redesign component change and so pcb layout change etc okay in the manufacturing you have a different steps the first step is component purchasing that will be done by the purchase engineers OK, so any product is made up of components and all these components are coming from multiple suppliers. So you need to purchase the parts and once you get the parts in the factory, we need to do the quality check that will be done by the quality engineers. And after the quality check, uh, the parts will be moving to the production line where the product will get manufactured. After that, there will be extensive testing and after the testing of the product, it will be shipped to the customers. OK, so now you have the product, you know, in the market. Suppose if it is a mobile phone, you can buy and use it directly. But if it is a CT scanner or MRI scanner, you can't use it directly because these are larger systems. So it will be shipped in different packaging boxes. And once it reaches the customer, uh, you know, it has to be assembled and that will be done by the service engineers. And after the assembly, you know, after the installation of the system, service engineer will hand over the system to the uh, hospital, for example. And uh, suppose if the uh, you know, the customer is not aware how to use the system. We need to also give training that will be done by the uh, application engineers. The, they will visit the customer site, give the training so that customers can start using the system. And once customers start using the system and if they face any issues, uh, you know, uh, they will report these issues uh, to the uh, product company, you know, where, you know, the service engineers will visit the site. They will look into these issues and they will fix these issues. Same time, they will report these issues back to the product company because we need to analyze each and every failure actually because we need to know the reason for failure. So we need to first do the root cause analysis of the failure and do the impact assessment and see whether this failure is causing any safety issue or uh, you know the probability of failure is higher actually okay so suppose if it is a safety issue we need to fix it immediately we need to stop the production and we need to do a product recall and fix it or if the failure is very high then we need to also do the same actually okay otherwise you will have a lot of complaints suppose if the issue is very uh, not a critical or if the failure rate is very low you can postpone it later okay so this is the major reason why any company is going for a new version of the product huh? so we need to uh, you know uh, you know analyze the market uh, feedback and you know we need to fix these issues that's a main goal here to improve the quality and the second thing is that feature enhancement once you launch a product you know you will launch a product with uh, certain features but over a period of time you will have competitors coming up with the new features so you need to have them in your product or better market share. That's very uh, important. So to add a new feature is again a redesign. It can be software, hardware or mechanical redesign. Third thing is value engineering. This is very important for any organization because the goal of any company is to improve the profitability of the product over a period of time. That can be done uh, two ways. One is, you know, in value engineering itself, you can do in two ways. One is, you know, to optimize your design so that you can reduce the component cost or cost to make a product. Or second is, you know, you can add new features and enhance, you know, the performance of your product so that you can sell your product at higher price. OK, so the co op optimization part, if you take, you know, nowadays you have got a lot of advanced components like analog friend and chips, which has got 
amplifiers, filters, and ADCs, etc., integrated in a single IC. So, if you use this kind of ICs, you can replace the individual components. So, you can reduce the total number of components. So, you can make a smaller PCB. You'll get again cost saving. And if you have a lesser number of components, the PCB assembly cost also will go down. Okay, so this is how you save the cost. And the second cost saving will come from the uh, power consumption point of view. Suppose, you know, I mean, uh, you can uh, significantly reduce your power consumption. Then in that case, you know, you can even you know, choose a power supply with the lower power rating. So again, you will have some cost saving. The second thing is, you know, adding the value of the product. Yeah? So here, you know, you can improve the uh, uh, performance of the product or you can have a better features. OK, so that is all possible with the help of advanced components. Nowadays, you have got a lot of uh, multi core processors, etc. So which is not that expensive, actually. OK, like before. So you can have that products in your components in your product so that you can, you know, sell your product at a higher you know, price. OK, so then you can improve the uh, you know profit actually but so this is how you know uh, you know you improve the profitability and then you follow the same process so this is how you develop a product and um, uh, you know all type of job in industries around this so you need to have a different type of roles here okay so this is very important okay so now let us talk about the different type of job in industry so before i start i would like to tell you a few things yeah? so many times what happens is that you know students are having a misunderstanding actually so one is that you know what i mean their understanding is that you know once you're uh, get an offer say for example from an it company so as a software i mean and your job title could be software engineer but the job title and the job type is totally different they have to be very clear the job type will not be defined during the campus interview or when you are given an option that will be decided only after you join in the company or even after your probation actually so you have to be very clear on this thing if you get job as a software engineer that does not mean that you will be doing a software design okay so it can be testing it can be quality and so on so you have to be very clear on this huh? so that's the most important or you get job in a product company okay so if you get job in a product company for example um, I assume you got job in Whirlpool. Okay, it doesn't mean that you know you'll be in R&D. So sometime you will be in production and quality and so on. Okay, so you have to be very clear on this aspect. So everything will be decided based on your skill set knowledge, and that will be evaluated only after you join in the company, not in the campus interview. The campus interview, the goal is to assess your overall knowledge and to see whether you've got good analytical skills and other things. Okay, so not to decide the type of job that will be decided only after you join the company. The reason is that the type of uh, jobs or the requirement will vary from time to time. Okay, so because in the campus interview, you'll be hired at some time and you'll be joining, you know. Uh, sometime later, say 10 months later. So whatever uh, you know, job requirement at that time will be different. OK. So you have to be very clear on those things. So now I'll tell you about a different type of job. So we need to uh, choose the, the type of job based on your uh, interest, but the importance should be given to your capability. This is very important actually. So you cannot just choose a job just like that. OK, so you should have certain capability. Otherwise, you cannot survive in industry. OK. So now I will talk about each and every type of job. First, I will start with the R&D job. So I mean, they are responsible for designing a product or designing a software or circuit, whatever it is. OK, so their job is to design. So to get into R&D, you should have very good technical knowledge. Without that, you cannot develop anything, especially in core electronics domain. OK, and also you should be ready to work hard and you need to keep on learning throughout your career. That's the most important thing. OK, and also you should be able to work in a challenging environment. OK, so to get job in R&D, I mean, it's not an easy task. So I mean, OK, so this is the toughest job to get the toughest to work and toughest to survive. You have to be very clear. What I've seen in my career is that almost, you know, they say, uh, you know, 40 percent of the you know engineering graduates who join, you know, I mean, in the R&D, you know, eventually will move to some other roles because they can't, you know, handle it, you know, manage the work in R&D. OK, so you should have very good technical knowledge. Then only you should uh, think about working in R&D. For example, if you get job as an embedded software engineer, maybe in the first project you'll have to work on ARM processor. Second project you'll be working on DSP, third FPGA. OK, so you'll have to learn the things quickly and you have to learn yourself. Actually, there won't be much training given technically. OK, so you should have deeper technical knowledge to learn the things quickly and you need to keep on learning because things are keeping on changing actually. OK, so I mean, you can't stop learning when you are in R&D, so that's very important. The second thing is that once you develop your module and once you integrate, you know that into your system, you will find a lot of technical issues uh, typically. So you need to really spend a lot of time and you know, work really hard. So if you have such mindset, then only you should think about working in R&D. Otherwise, you can't survive in R&D at all. 
Okay, so doing masters is highly beneficial if you want to work in R&D because you need to have a deeper technical knowledge and masters will I mean, a degree will you know really give you that actually. Okay, so, so you have to really think and the advantage of working in R&D is that one is that typically R&D is paid well. Second thing is that you know if you work in R&D, uh, you can move to any other job you know later part of your career. Huh? That, that's the biggest advantage actually. Second is testing engineer. So their job is to test the product or test the ICs. Okay, so for that they will develop the test software, hardware or automation setup, etc. Okay, then you have application engineer. So their job is to give uh, the training on product or support the customers. Huh? For example, if you have an evaluation board of DSP or you know I mean uh, say spectrum analyzer in your college, if you buy a new one, uh, you know definitely you know there's some engineer will come to your college they will give a training actually how to use the boards how to download the program and test it actually they are called application engineers and if you have any technical queries for example on dsp so you'll post your queries to texas and simmons right and so you'll get some reply so that's from the application engineer so their job is to support the customers technically in solving the problem so this role also need good technical skill set and this is a really good role and this is there in almost all the semiconductor companies and other companies so if you work in this kind of companies you really get a lot of opportunities but you need to be ready to travel then you have a quality and regulatory role so this is an important role so these roles are also there in um, in it companies so out of this if you see i mean r d you know, testing and quality and regulatory. So these are the roles uh, that is uh, and the technical writer. These are the roles that is available in an IT company. OK, so the job of a quality engineer is to ensure the quality of the product. At the same time, they need to ensure that while we design or test or manufacture product, we need to follow certain quality standards actually. OK, so there are different roles within quality. One is design quality engineer, product and supply quality engineer. Product and supply quality engineer roles are there in the factory and design quality engineer is in the R&D. So this role is very common in IT. So roughly 20% of the freshers whom do, 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 you know, they recruit will be put in this role actually. Okay, so their job is to um, uh, you know, uh, work with R&D engineers and test engineers and uh, make them sure that uh, you know they follow certain quality guidelines and standards while they develop or test a product and have proper documentation, etc. So they will you know review everything actually. So this is not much at technical role okay so then you have product quality engineer so their job is to ensure the quality of the product going out of the factory so um, you know they will do the uh, quality check of all the parts that is coming to the factory and they will monitor how the product is assembled and then they will verify the final testing of the product and do the final you know inspection of the product and they you know they will be accountable for the quality of the product then you have a supply quality engineer. This is an important role because you take a product it's made up of different components okay you take the example of a car in car you have a different components like wheels uh, you know i mean uh, i mean uh, you know lights battery and so on right so these are all coming from different supplies but the final quality of a car is depending on all the individual components actually so we need to ensure the quality of each and every parts that is used okay that is the job of a supply quality engineer they will work with the suppliers and ensure that you get the right quality product. Okay, so to achieve that, they will work with R&D engineers and production team to understand the requirement of each and every product. And they will work with the suppliers and ensure that you know they have done additional testing and their screening, etc., before the part is shipped to us, so that you know you get a better part. And also, if there are any failures in the field or uh, in a factory, etc., they will work with them to find out the root cause and improve the design if it is a design issue. Okay. So their job is to ensure the quality of each and every part. Then you have a regulatory engineer. So these roles are also there in IT companies. Okay, so there are two roles here. One is regulatory engineer and test engineer. So the job of a test engineer is to do the EMIMC and the safety testing. Mm, okay, and the job of a regulatory engineer is to ensure that the product meet the regulatory requirement. For example, uh, they, you know, if you are designing a product for European Union, so you need to have a low conducted and radiation level. Okay, to achieve that, you need to have better filtering, better PCB layout and shielding. Maybe you need to choose a better cables, etc. So all those things will be, you know, uh, been, uh, been, uh, taken care of by the design team. But the regulatory engineers will make them aware of these requirements. Okay, so how they have to, what are the things they need to consider and so on, and what are the uh, requirement actually of that particular country, so that you know design engineers can take uh, care, take care of these requirements, and also they will review all those things. Okay, so that's a regulatory role here. So this is also an important role. Okay, so then you have manufacturing. So this is where you get product aid manufactured. So there are different roles in the factory. So one is a manufacturing engineer, a production engineer, test engineer, and a facility engineer. The job of a manufacturing engineer is to ensure 
uh, the factory has got the tools and set up to manufacture product and also to ensure that the employees are trained to manufacture product. OK, so they will work with R&D engineers and uh, production engineers to understand the requirement to manufacture a product, the tools that is necessary to manufacture product and also see the availability of them in the factory and also the available of the trained uh, employees in the factory. OK, so they will ensure the readiness in the factory so that the product can be manufactured. Then your production engineer, they will look at the day to day production activities. So they will manage them. Um, you know daily or weekly target and ensure the product is manufactured as per the process given and test engineers job is to test the product. So they will also develop the test tools and also on a you know, jig, etc. Then you have a, a facility engineer that their job is to ensure you know the uh, the factory facilities are uh, you know proper. I mean, uh, for example, they will ensure they you know the temperature, humidity, everything is maintained, and also the power is proper, and also you know the IT infrastructure, everything is fine actually. So that's a job actually. Okay. Then you have a supply chain or procurement engineer. So their job is you know to purchase the parts, negotiate with the suppliers on the pricing, and also you know ensure you know the part availability continuously. And in case if there is a problem with the one suppliers, they will find an alternative suppliers actually. So MPS preferred in this role because this need a lot of negotiation skills. And then you have a service engineer. Their job is to service the product. I mean they will work with also R&D engineers, you know, finding out the root cause, etc. Then you have a technical writer. So um, so they are responsible for preparing the data sheet or user manual of product. They are also electronics engineers with good writing skills. Then you have sales and marketing engineers. Their job is to sell or market a product. Uh, you know, do the customer survey and market research study and also participate in various conferences, etc. So MBA is again preferred for this role. So if you are doing MBA, you have only these two roles very good work. And if you're doing I mean, ME, it's uh, good enough if you want to work in R&D. OK, so these are the different type of jobs in industry and these are not offered at the time of you know, uh, campus interview or you know, if you get a job. So these are not decided at that time. It will be decided only after you join in the company. So if you don't have right skill set, you won't get job in R&D as a design engineer. OK, uh, or if you don't have good skill set, you cannot survive in R&D then. So it's very important for you to have the right skill set and nobody is going to teach you anything in R&D. You have to be very clear. Huh? So you'll be given few days training. So you need to have really fundamental skill set and you should be ready to work hard actually. OK, so if you have all that, then only you should consider R&D. OK, so now I'll focus more to R&D roles actually in core electronics. OK, so before I do that, I'd like to tell you a bit on you know, the expectation from industry and um, the interview process. So what industry is always looking is that, you know, so we want the engineering graduates should have very good basic knowledge. That's very important. And also, uh, you know, I mean, they should have, a, you know, a knowledge on the industry relevant tools because when we hire a person, you know, we expect them to work actually. OK, because that's also one the gap, you know, many times we see. For example, uh, you know, you have to do a project, uh, you know, um, I mean, on DSP. So you need to have certain skill set like, you know, you need to know the processor architecture, etc. But if you don't know those things, by just giving few days training in the company, you won't be able to do the project. OK, so that what industry is always looking at that whether you've got the right skill set and also you've got the talent to do that. Actually, that's very important. OK. Uh, so that you know you can be given a training so that you can uh, learn independently. That's a main goal here. OK, so to assess your knowledge, there are two kinds of interviews. One is technical interview and another is a chair interview. In the technical interview, there will be multiple rounds. So in the first round, we'll uh, go through your resume and ask a lot of questions about your projects and the skill set in resume. So the most important thing for you is to study your resume thoroughly. And the second thing is that study your project. Suppose if you are using evaluation boards like Raspberry or any boards in your project, so you should know the architecture of that. Can you should know various modules used there, why it is used, and you know, if you are using certain communication protocols, so you, so you need to know, you know, uh, why, you know, why, why, you know, that is a use actually. That is a very important actually. Okay, and the second round onwards, the focus will be on pure basics actually. So if you, you know, okay, so if you don't have a, sorry. So if you don't have a, oh, sorry. Yeah. So if you don't have a, been a good basic knowledge, you won't be able to clear the technical round. There will be multiple round where you know we'll ask you a lot of questions about you know various circuits, you know internal block diagrams, you know the formulas and so on. You know, depending on the company, there can be you no know, three to five rounds of technical interview, and the typical success rate in a technical round in a product company is less than twenty percent. Okay, so without a good technical knowledge, you can't clear at all. Uh, once you clear the technical round, there will be HR round. In the HR round, 
you know, when HR will assess your, uh, you know, communication and behavioral skills. So you should have good communication skills. That's mandatory. Second is the behavioral skills huh? because you have to work in a company as a team. So you should be a team player and you should take ownership in completing the task. That's very important. Third thing is a flexibility. This is very important. So typically you will get registered in HR round only for two reasons. One is that you know if your communication skills are poor, then you will get rejected or if you're not flexible, they will ask a lot of questions to find out these things. So as I explained to you in the product development flow, you have seen a lot of steps, right? Assume you know we want to recruit as an embedded software engineer. But as an embedded software engineer, your main job is to develop the software. At the same time, you also need to support the test team, the production or even the service team. You should be ready to do that. You know, if required, you need to travel to the factory or to the field, etc. So you should, you know, HR will ask all those things. And if your answer is, for example, no, your interest is only to develop the code or whatever it is. I mean, you won't be recruited because we cannot have a person, you know, who is not flexible. So you have to be very clear what you're answering in the round, HR round, okay? So once you clear the HR round, you'll get a job. OK, so this is how it is done. Now let us focus on different type of jobs in our India. This is very important. This is step number two. So the step number one is setting your career objective. In step number two, you have to decide which type of job you want to go. OK, and in step number three, if you choose that you want to work in R&D, so you need to really, uh, you know, decide which kind of uh, job you want to do in R&D. Yeah? So this is the most important part for somebody who want to work in R&D. The reason why I'm telling is that students are having a vague idea about this here. So I'd like to tell you a few things here. So they hear three type of jobs are there in R&D. One is software, hardware or VLS addition. You have to be very clear that you cannot choose software and hardware together. You can choose only one. OK, so the, the, you know, 10, 15 years back it was possible actually. I mean, you can do both, but now it's not like that. You can only choose one. So that is very clear. So you need to decide what you need to do. And if suppose you would start your career as a software engineer, and after two years, if you want to go to hardware, it is not possible actually, because nobody is going to hire you actually. Okay, so to be very clear on that. And this is where, you know, setting up your career objective, uh, you know, uh, it also plays a role. And many times, you know, what happens is that, you know, students will say, I want to work in embedded system or I want to work in robotics, IoT. So that should not be your objective. Your objective has to be very clear whether you want to work in hardware or software or be lesser design. And uh, you never be specific to an industry yeah? because somebody, you should not say that I want to work in medical device or automotive, whatever. That doesn't uh, you know, uh, help you at all actually. What is more important is that what type of job you want to do, whichever industry you go, there are only three kind of jobs are there in R&D. Software, hardware, or VLSI design, okay? And within that, there are a lot of specialization, actually. So you need to first decide, actually. That is the most important thing. And your career objective should clearly highlight that. Okay, so you cannot just vaguely say that I want to work in a better system. That's not the right objective, actually. It should be very specific, yeah? And when somebody says, I want to work in robotics, there are a lot of things in robotics. Even you say robotics, you want to work in software. In software itself, you have got a lot of things there. Control software, you have a signal processing or image processing there. So you have to be very clear on that, okay? So the but it's, as I say, software engineer, so you have a different roles within that. For example, you can start your career as embedded software engineer, but of course you can move to signal processing later. If you have a good skill set, that is possible, but you cannot move from software to hardware and vice versa. So you have to be very clear. So choosing the right job is the most important thing. OK, so now let us talk about the skill set. So before I do that, I would like to clear a few things actually generally about uh, the product companies or generally about the embedded systems. OK, so embedded system is a combination of hardware and software when you say combination of hardware meaning you have a different kind of processor there you have a dsp fpg and processor process means it's not microprocessor controller anymore okay so you have to be very clear that if you want to work in a product company either in software or hardware you must know dsp fpg and processor this is the biggest reason why most of these the freshers don't get job in a core company or don't get a good project actually okay so if you really want to work in software or hardware in a product company the most important thing that you need to learn is that at least you need to know the architecture of one dsp processor and fpg and you must do some projects either main or mini project this is the most important thing and now i'll talk about the skill set for software roles the other skill set that a software engineer in a product company should have is that they should have very good knowledge in electronics components and its behaviors. This is very important because you need to correct a lot of you know errors actually. For that, you need to know how a component behaves because you need to develop algorithm. That's very important. Third thing is that without having a DSP fundamentals, you can't do anything there because you need to do filtering. You need to do various kind of compression and also you need to do encryption. So you should have very good knowledge in DSP fundamentals. Okay. 
the other skills are like you need to know programming maybe one or two language is good enough but you must know matlab it's mandatory you need to know html and autos and one dsp one fpg and processor this is mandatory and you need to have various communication protocols so this is what industry looks from your resume if you are trying for an off campus job or even if you join any company after you join their uh, you know uh, you know once you join the company they will ask you to submit your resume again because they have to allocate the projects or type of job at that time they will screen your resume based on this thing assume you have gone down a microprocessor then you have you there is a very less chance for you to get a good project actually okay so you must learn all these three things and these are the various roles there in embedded software next is signal and image processing yeah? so to work in signal and image processing you should know dsp and image processing fundamentals that's mandatory but you also must know the architecture of dsp processor and apj the reason is that in various kind of uh, these applications you will use dsp or sometime high end am processors or apgs so you need to know the architecture the reason is that a lot of initial signal processing or image processing is done in the hardware you take the example of a cctv or a machine vision systems where in the camera itself you know you do a lot of things okay so where it is done in the dsp or fpga so you must know that and also if you uh, do high performance you know image processing in the pc side also you need to know the hardware because these pcs are not standard pcs they will be with the uh, gpus or you know fpgs and dsp so you know you need to really you know know the architecture otherwise you cannot implement an efficient algorithm that's the most important thing you must know okay so it's not just the programming there right? so you need to have good knowledge in the hardware otherwise you know architecture otherwise you can't then you need to know programming languages matlab html and autos etc and various communication protocols okay so these are the various roles there okay Uh, then to work in communication and networking software you need to have a good knowledge in networking protocols various wireless technologies and communication technologies and dsp because dsp is the fundamentals of communication so you must know that very well you need to know programming you need to know html and autos and of course you need to know the architecture of dsp processor and apj because all these algorithms are finally implemented in any of the three things huh? these are the the uh, you know fundamental components in any of the products that you okay so you must know all of that sorry uh, to work in a and ml uh, you know i mean again you know here uh, students are having a lot of misunderstanding the first misunderstanding is that you know in electronic students think that it is only for computer science it's absolutely wrong because a and ml is there in every product you take a washing machine to i um, mean uh, tv to uh, mobile phone to vehicles everywhere we use this algorithm but what you need to know is that if you want to work in this domain you need to have a good knowledge in ml and a and also you need to know dsp and image processing because many time it's used in combination the most important thing is that you should know the architecture of dsp processor and apj because finally in a product it's implemented on any of these platforms so you must know that huh? so just by knowing python or r you won't get job in a product company huh? it's as simple as that okay and generally you know if you want to be a software engineer in a product company you need to know a and ml because this is there everywhere okay and you need to know the architecture of the this uh, dsps or processors or apj without that you can't implement it and you must know html okay so just by learning python or r it's not going to help you been okay so it will be very clear huh? so that will be helpful for you if you are working you know in application development or in it companies actually but not in a product company anymore so these are the various roles in software for an electronics engineer and the common thing that you have seen is that one is that you need to know dsp fpg and processor second thing is that you should have good knowledge in dsp fundamentals third thing is that you should know have a good electronics fundamentals without that you can't work okay now let us talk about the skill set that is needed if you want to work in hardware so the most important thing is that you should have very good knowledge on the components starting from resistor capacitors to op amps to adcs voltage regulator electromagnetic etc and you should know the architecture of dsp processors mfgns and memory and the other skill set needed is that you should have good knowledge in schematic tools from cadence and multi graphics i know many students are learning proteus etc but that is not helpful for you okay because those are not used in industry so you can download the evaluation version from website like of cadence or multi graphics and practice it okay there are tutorial videos that's very important you must know that you should have good understanding on the pcb layout guideline uh, procedures okay you need not know how to do layout that's not important and you must know pspice hopefully you are learning in college you need to know html and c basic knowledge is mandatory because you need to test your hardware once it is developed okay and you need to know dsp fpg and process and various protocols okay there are plenty of roles in hardware you can be analog digital mix rf and power electronics for fpg cabling design there are too many roles in hardware huh? there are too many companies in india also okay 
So to work in VLS Edison, you should have very good knowledge in digital design, analog design, RTL design, and also you should have good knowledge in signal integrity, semiconductor physics, HDL, etc. And if you want to be a verification engineer, you also need to know uh, programming actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then domain knowledge is also highly beneficial. So if you want to work, uh, you know, develop an I, you know, ASIC actually for uh, uh, say, uh, you know, wireless applications. So knowing, you know, you know, more on that will be helpful actually. Okay. So these are the various roles there, like a design layout, verification, and tool development engineer. There are companies like a Synopsis, Cadence, and Merck Graphics. All of them have got R&D centers. Okay. So these are the various type of jobs in core electronics domain. And again, I'm telling you one thing: working in a core electronics domain is always the best. The reason is that typically the, that is the highest paid job. And the second thing is that you know you have got a really long career actually, uh, 20 to 30 years and so on. So it's not like a IT and all. You know, it's for 10 years or something like that. It's not like that. So it's always good to work, but to get job there, you need to have a really good skill set. Eh? So you need to really prepare for that actually and put a lot of effort. That's very important. And there are a lot of companies in India, okay, working on that. So now let us talk about the components and tools used in industry. So as I told you, the microprocessor, DSP, and FEG, these are the building block of any product. So you must know all of that. And you need to know other tools as well. Okay, I'll talk more on that. Microprocessor, if you take ARM is the most popular processor okay, in industry. So you must do project on ARM processor. Doing project in AVR 805 or PIC will not help you. So don't spend much time on doing that. Learn ARM processor. Okay. So, uh, you know, software development, you know, on a processor is not just writing programmer. So it's about implementing efficiently, you know, how you can use less memory and, you know, improve the performance. That's the main goal there. So for that, you need to learn the architecture. You have a different type of process in ARM. Special processes are for neural network, machine learning, and cloud and security. Again, I'm telling you, without knowing the architecture, you cannot develop a program. So you must learn ARM processor. There are other processes also, like X, NX, this X86 or PowerPC and so on. But you know, uh, learning ARM is most important thing. Okay. So DSP, you take. You have uh, major two vendors, Texas Instruments and Analog Devices. So Texas Instruments has got uh, 6,000 series DSP and 55 series DSP. So 6,000 series, you have got two varieties. One is pure DSP, single to multi-core, or uh, single to multi-core DSP plus ARM. And these are used for communication and image processing applications. And you have low-end DSP, 55 series, which is used for control audio kind of applications, actually. Okay. Same way you have analog devices also like ADSP, Blackfin, and Shark. So Blackfin is very popular in automotive industry uh, for navigation, ADAS, and software defined radio, and so on, actually. So you can learn any one of it, but one is mandatory for you. Okay, if you want to work in a product company. Okay. Or you want to get a project there, that's very important. So next is FPGA. So you have a Silinx and Intel. So Silinx, you have got a different types of FPGA, say six series, seven series, ultra scale. Okay, so this are all good FPGAs, and also you have got a system on chip. It's a combination of FPGA plus AMP processor. Similarly, Intel also has got uh, FPGAs and a system on chip. So you can learn any one of it. So these are the building blocks and major components. You must know that, otherwise you, you won't get a good project in a company. Assume even if you get a job in Honeywell or Whirlpool or anywhere, to get a good project, you need to have these things. And once you don't get a good project in uh, really, you know, then you know your career will go in different directions. So you must learn that. I hope you will have all the things in your college so you can do some mini projects. That's very important. Okay. Now I'll tell you a bit on IoT. So, I mean, uh, many students are having a bit of you know, uh, misunderstanding about IoT. So, that's what I thought of in you know, explaining that actually. So, this is not a separate domain, uh, first of all. Uh, you know, this is an application of embedded system or electronics. This is a multidisciplinary domain. So, you need to you know have a multiple skill set really to work in that actually. So, if you take an IoT, you have a node, router, and cloud. So all of them are based on, you know, processors. Actually, if you take a cloud, you know, it's really based on high-end processors. It could be DSP, FPGAs, or GPUs, or even multi-core processors, etc. And node is a basic building block. So I mean, this is from from where you get the data. Okay. So you've got um, different building blocks within node actually. So first is, you know, you have sensors from where you get the data, and once you get the data, actually, I mean, you need to, you know, uh, when you do the signal conditioning, actually. Uh, where you know you do the amplification you know filtering and so on actually okay and once you get the data to your processor you know you need to further you know correct the data sometimes what happens is that you know during the data transmission to your processor there can be some error induced okay noises so you need to filter out you need to correct it compensate it etc 
and after that you need to process the data and you need to send through the wireless module okay so before sending the data depending on the type of data you may have to also do the compression and encryption etc and once you send the data to the wireless module from there it will be transmitted so you need to have a right uh, type of communication uh, technologies and so on actually here okay so the final goal here is you know to optimize the power consumption actually okay so th that that is a uh, very important actually okay so you need to uh, reduce the uh, power consumption actually so that's a uh, main goal here so for that you need to optimize your code okay so the memory is etc that's very important so you need to have a good knowledge on the architecture of the processor okay so this is a multidisciplinary domain so if you really want to work here you need to have a good understanding in electronics good knowledge in signal processing fundamentals like filtering compression encryption good knowledge in communication protocols and technologies and also good knowledge in the processor architecture and if you want to be a programmer in a software engineer you also need to know some programming languages okay so this is not a single domain eh? so it's a multidisciplinary domain actually so you are learning all of it actually in your engineering so what you need to do is that you know it need to be to go in detail actually okay so this is an example of uh, machine learning used for object detection this is an example where it is implemented in arm processor and this is an example of fpga performance you know for uh, machine learning application again i'm telling you a and ml is in every product and it's in a product it's implemented in dsp fpga processor so you must know that okay so there your python or r is not going to help you there actually okay you have to be very clear on that so matlab is mandatory if you want to be a software engineer because it is used for every application power electronics control systems robotics iot okay and simulink is also gaining popularity is used in model based design etc so uh, lab is important if you want to be a test engineer you need to learn that and apg design typically use learning and the tool which you will get with the evaluation boards itself and model sim is used for simulation and if you want to work in ic design it's important for you to learn the tools from synopsis or cadence these are the popular ones so if you are doing any training please ensure that the training center that you are choosing you know has got all those things okay so uh, now i'll tell you about the skill set that uh, hardware engineer need to learn the first and foremost thing is that you know you need to know the schematic capture tools actually so you need to learn the tools from cadence or matic graphics there are varieties of tools available from them go to their website you can get the evaluation version you can practice it there are uh, tutorials also available there okay so piece by piece i think you are learning in college and signal identity tools are important for you to do the layout simulation etc okay so mental graphics also has got a similar tools huh? so hyperlinks is quite popular for uh, layout simulation like uh, single integrity mimc and thermal simulation etc same way you've got ansys tools also okay you can learn any one of it huh? so one is more than enough and if you want to work in rf design or communication hardware design you could learn the tool from ansys okay or uh, you could learn the tools on keysight ads or cadence better so etc any one is good enough you can get the evaluation version from their website and there are tutorials available so you can do self learning actually this is important for hardware engineers huh? okay so now i'll tell you how to enhance your career prospects so uh, so you need to do projects and mini projects on all the platforms like DSP processor and FPGA. That's uh, mandatory. Okay, so you need to you know uh, you know really learn these things, and also you need to be doing your MDM or MDEC is highly beneficial. I mean, if you want to work in core domain, you can do it while you're working, or you can do it after your engineering. You can do various courses. I'll talk on that soon. Doing projects in industry or summer internship is also a good option. We can also think of you know publishing papers. That is also beneficial. The reason is that. When you do a paper publication, you need to do really a lot of literature survey that will improve your knowledge. Okay, so you focus on that, but try to publish in general, reputable journals. Huh? That's very important. Local journals won't help you, and it will not add any value to your resume. Okay, networking with seniors and industry people are very important because you should know what is there in industry. Yeah, huh? what are the things that is expected by the industry? That's why it's very important. So now I'll talk about the various courses that you can do. You can do these courses in training center. So it's always good to do the courses in training center because uh, that will really give you hands-on experience. Because most of them will have uh, the development tools and uh, evaluation board, so you'll really you know get a good experience. But due to current situation, you know it's a bit difficult. But uh, once things back to normal, you could do that. You can do these courses when you are studying during your semester week. in a break or evenings or weekends and so on actually but some of the courses like cdac you can't do when you are uh, studying because it is you can only do once you complete engineering okay so i'll tell you about various courses so embedded system course is good if you want to work in software or hardware they will teach you the processors uh, r tools and programming etc okay there are a lot of institutes are offering this program cdac of course is there then icit and lot of institutes you can see 
and even NLT in Aurangabad also offer the program. You know, if you want to do projects, you could think about NLT. It's a central government organization where you know they allow you to do internship and projects. Sir. So it's a nice place where you could think about it. Or even it events in Mumbai also. There's option. Okay, it's all paid one. No? So then IoT also a lot of institutes are offering the program where they will teach you on IoT protocols, uh, you know, cloud and the process, etc. So you can do these courses. And VLSA is a very vast domain, so you need to be very clear what you need to do. Whether you decide whether we want to work in front end layout and so on, accordingly you choose the courses. There are a lot of institutes, but you know CDAC is typically for front end design. And if you want to work more towards layout, you know this is Bangalore is the best place to go. There are a lot of institutes in Bangalore. Okay. So DSP and image processing, they will teach you on DSP process, uh, you know the image processing concepts and you know MATLAB and so on. So there are a lot of institutes in Bangalore again. I don't think anybody is in Pune is offering such courses. Okay, so even Crane's varsity etc. is having paid internship program. So you could think about that. A and ML, a lot of institutes are offering the courses, but you need to understand few things here. So they will teach you only A and ML and programming. Yeah? That is not enough if you want to work in a product company. So you must know embedded system by default. So you need to learn that. Electronics product design is for hardware engineers where they will teach you hardware design techniques, etc. OK, so CDAC in uh, Hyderabad or NLT in Calicut or Chandigarh offer this program. This is purely for hardware engineers. OK, so electromagnetic compatibility is also for hardware engineers. They will they will teach you on hardware uh, you know, uh, design techniques with respect to electromagnetic compatibility. It's offered in CET or Samir in Chennai. It's just a three to five days program. You could think about doing it. The advantage of doing, you know, the training center courses, uh, you know, you can learn a lot of things. I mean, they have tools and everything, so you get really uh, good experience. And uh, sometime, you know, if you do these courses uh, in uh, some of the institute, they will also help you to get a uh, place actually. So ZDAC and other things, etc. So that's also an advantage. But due to the current situation, and you know, I mean, Online learning is a way actually, but there are a lot of disadvantages in online learning. Actually, you have to be very clear on that. Actually, first of all, many times you know students do the courses just for getting certification. There are no value for the certificate. You have to be very clear on that. Huh? Only your B or ME certification having value. Industry is keen on that. What we are you know keen is that your knowledge actually. So just by doing the courses, you will not have enough knowledge to work in a project. For that, you need to do projects. That's the most important thing. You can do courses, but you must do a project, okay? And try to implement in the evaluation boards in your college. That's the most important thing, okay? So you can do various courses, but if you generally want to work in software, it's important for you to learn AML and uh, IOTs, etc. So you have to do the courses, but you must do project. Otherwise, there is no value, you know, of uh, uh, you know various uh, courses actually, okay? That's uh, important for you to know. You can also register in various tutorial or webinars, etc., and various sites. Like if you want to know more on DSP, you go to TA or Unlock Devices and so on, actually, okay? You can also buy some of the evaluation boards for your project or learning purpose. Like uh, microprocessor Raspberry boards are good. It's with ARM process. DSP you can buy 54 or 67 series from TA or uh, you know, Blackfin from Unlock Device, etc. APJ can buy the board from Silent or Intel. You need to focus, as I told you, you need to have good knowledge in electronics, signal processing, etc. If you want to work in software, same way to work in hardware, you need to have good knowledge in electronic subjects, DSP is a process, FEGS and electromagnets, etc. So the next steps are that you know you need to have a good resume and covering letter, and that should have clear cut career objective. It should not be vague like a embedded system or uh, you know robotics or like that. It should be very clear. If you want to work in R&D, it has to be clear whether you want to win software, hardware, and whatever. Okay, and you should have the right skill set. This is very important actually. Okay, and uh, everything has to be there in resume. And you need to have a good LinkedIn profile. That's very important because a lot of companies hire people through LinkedIn because off campus requirements go through that. And also you can you know connect with HR managers to know various companies. The opportunities, etc. And you need to register in various job sites and you need to try job yourself. You will Google it, you can find thousands of companies actually. There are thousands of companies in India. And many of them even won't go for campus into a recruitment. So only very less product companies go for campus recruitment. You have to be very clear. So you need to Google it, find out the companies, connect with the HR managers in LinkedIn, and also go to their website and you can apply directly. Don't look at the openings there because they will never put the openings for freshers. But if you have got good skill set, you can always try. That is the reason why you need to have the right skill set. Okay, without that, you won't get a reply. That's a simple thing. And you need to keep on learning. Okay, having an offer is not going to help you anything. You know, it is just telling you that you have a job, but you know your kind of job type or content is not defined. For that, you need to have good knowledge. Okay, keep on doing a lot of projects. Actually, doing masters is highly beneficial if you want to work in R&D. 
to summarize uh, you know the first thing is that you need to plan your career i mean uh, you know you need to have a clear career objective then decide which type of job that you want to work and also uh, if it is r and d then decide whether you want to work in software hardware or vls design and learn the things huh? that's the most important thing there are a lot of opportunities uh, for electronics engineers and current situation is temporary huh? that's not having much impact and you just try yourself you'll definitely get provided you have got good skill set if you know only microprocessor and you know you try for a job you won't get an interview call it's as simple as that huh? so that, that, that's where you know your skill set plays a major role okay and even if you are placed also in a company it's very important for you to have the right skill set okay so with this i have done now you can ask me any questions you can type it in the chat box or you can ask me directly feel free to ask me any questions huh? anything that you want to know about the companies or uh, jobs or skill sets or project or whatever a technology anything you wish to know you can ask me okay so it's very important for you to have the right skill, you know objective and also learn the things actually okay uh, no platform is open for all. Uh, if you have any doubts or queries, uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask. Uh, Jotsna Zadhav, can you please switch off your camera? Thank you. Yes, students. Platform is open to all. Uh, feel free to ask. You can type it in the chat box or even you can ask me directly. I think so. You have touched upon all the cuts and corners of the electronics domain. So probably they don't have any queries. Okay. Uh, Sir, we'll wait uh, till one or two questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If any faculty also has questions, you can still ask me. Yeah. The, I think the chat box is not visible to everyone. So yeah, yeah. students, you can raise your hand and unmute yourself and you can ask the questions. Yes, Amit. Yeah, please go ahead. Mm, so can you please, so can you please uh, spread, spread some uh, light on courses after B, sir? See, uh, first of what you need to do is that you need to decide what you need to do. There are different type of courses. Sir. One is short time courses. Okay, for example, like courses like CDAC. Okay, so CDAC course will help you to get job, but you can also think about doing ME. So it's up to you to decide. Again, you need to choose it based on which domain and which type of job you want to do. That's very important actually. So first you need to have a clear career objective. Without that, you cannot choose anything. OK, so that's very important. Doing CDAC courses will help you only short term actually. OK, but doing ME is beneficial long term. So you need to choose. So what you need to do? OK, so if you're ready to let's spend two years, huh? you have to always understand about ME one thing. ME is two year course, but only first year you have courses typically. So second year, you know, you can work in a company also. So I mean, I know really spending one year additionally. I mean, it's going to help you in uh, long term actually. OK. So you need to have a career yes. objective and then you decide what you need to do. That's very important. OK, so next question. Please. Yes, Chaitanya, you can go ahead. Uh, so once you're done with the courses or uh, uh, basic knowledge, how to start with the project? Uh, with, uh, no, how see to select the project? You know, see, when you're selecting a project, you need to consider a few things. First, you need to identify the topic. You can do any topic. Yeah? See, uh, the, the, you know, the topic can be selected, you know, based on your interest or, or you know, you can also uh, look into the IEEE papers, you know, so where you can identify the topic. But the topic is not 
the most important the most important thing if you are looking for a job in industry is that what are the platform that you are using actually that's the most important thing okay so you can do any kind of project for example you can do any iot kind of projects where you can monitor various things and you know you can do anything but what industry is looking is that what platform you use like for example what type of processes you use there and what type of in communication technologies that you use that is more important okay so for example you are doing any project in any domain try to incorporate something in ai and ml there actually that's very important because ai and ml is there in every product now so having knowledge in that it's very important so your project should be uh, you know in such a way that it will have multiple things there actually and don't stick on to the processor alone you could also use dsp or fpgs as well okay so that's very important actually so you for example you in you know, a many time what happens is that you now students will do very good projects but you know the platform that they use will be outdated so the value of the project will go drastically down actually okay hope that is clear yes neha you can ask me question yes uh, so i wanted to uh, do my career in ai ml so do i need to have a knowledge of pcb uh, fpg and uh, dsp also uh see uh, yeah two two things uh, see when in ai and ml you have got a uh, two kind of jobs one is that you know you can work in an it company okay or typically any kind of uh, say financial kind of application development where you know it is not important where you know if you have a good knowledge in ai and ml is good actually but if you want to work in a product company for example you want to work in honeywell or uh, whirlpool or any well for example then in that case you need to know embedded system because if, for example in whirlpool washing machine you know they use ai and ml algorithms okay for zero logic where it is implemented in fpg or uh, process actually okay so you need to see which type job you want or which type of industry you want to go you want to work in normally in it company in application development it is not necessary to know but my focus here was in electronics proper you know core companies you get job in honeywell and the nml is used in energy monitoring and various things but there you know all these algorithms finally in implemented in any of these hardware platform there it is important actually hope that answer your question Yes, sir. Thank you. Next question, please. Yes, students. Feel free to ask the questions. The students who will be going for their final year now. Yes, Shibuludin Paris. Any doubt you have, Sahil? for the students who will be entering in third year you can ask regarding your uh, elective subjects any doubt if you have you can ask yes sir can you guide us on uh, uh, how to select elective subject uh see again you know you can uh, choose an elective uh, based on you know where you want to go actually say for example uh, uh, i don't know what all elective will be having actually sometime you know you want to generally work in embedded system and all, i mean either in software or hardware maybe you can you know say choose something on iot's or the fpgas and you know such kind of subjects or you know sometime image processing and so on actually okay so always choose you know so what is you know interested to you suppose you know i mean if you have some electives you know towards uh, i mean in the software side you know if you want to work in software you could choose that actually it's all based on your interest but whatever elective you choose you know try to do also small projects there because theoretical knowledge alone will not be enough and also doing many projects is highly beneficial you know your resumes value will also go up huh? so it's not getting job is not everything huh? getting the project is important and that time only that will uh, scrutinize your resume in much more detail because in a company before allocating the project you know at least you know will uh, you know uh, you know go through the resumes of all the freshers actually so and we will uh, give the good project to a person who was better uh, skill set and also who has done a lot of projects actually and that's where you will lose out actually okay and once you lose a project you know getting a similar kind of project is very difficult you have to be very clear on that so your yeah, focus should not be to get a job alone to get a good project okay and to build your career that is the reason i am insisting you to to a lot of projects not for your academics purpose huh? you can do simple projects simple filtering and other things you can do start you know doing in matlab and then try to implement it in a fpg and also maybe you know in the dsp evaluation boards that's very important okay hope that is clear to you
because getting job is just the beginning and that's not going to help you in any, anything actually until unless you get a right project okay so because every company you know always want to give a project to a person who has already worked on something you know i mean otherwise you know it will be difficult actually you know no uh, i mean we can't train everybody actually so it's again time consuming and the uh, cost and so on actually next question please Yeah, I think there are no more questions. Uh, over to you, Priyanka, ma'am. Uh, hello, all. Uh, now I would uh, I would request uh, Dr. Dai, madam, uh, if she wants to share few words. Dai, madam. she's on hold i think she's on hold okay i think huh? hello ma'am she, she must have, she must be busy in some okay so uh asalam shall i push it for the group of time yeah if uh, mani ma'am want to share some no thing yeah yeah first of all i would like to thank uh, mr ranjit sir uh, that he has given a very nice guidance to our students in a very lucid language in a very simple manner uh, so thank you so much sir and uh, i request you that uh, in uh, next semester also we would like to interact uh, with you and we will uh, we like your help for our b students also yogita uh, please take the follow up uh, later on Uh, sure, so, ma'am. Uh, yeah. So sure, ma'am. So it's very nice. Uh, sir has covered almost everything uh, from the basics uh, to the uh, actual requirement, actual industry requirement in a very simple manner. And uh, I would like to say uh, to the students that uh, you you must take the advantage of this. I hope you have taken down some points what uh, sir has shared with you. So. Uh, all the basic subjects are required as sir uh, has uh, said already and uh, the core uh, subjects as well as some electives also he had thrown light on that so you must uh, take up all these things uh, with you and uh, you will work accordingly so here onwards now you you are going in the third year so be careful while selecting your uh, electives also uh in a few in one or two days uh, we we are going to take a meeting regarding your elective subjects so at that time all these things whatever sir has covered today are very important so by keeping all these things in mind uh, i hope you will select your electives also and uh, you will take actions on uh, further uh, career path so thank you so much uh, students for attending this and thank you so much sir um, ranjit sir definitely uh, i would like to interact you in future also and thank you yogita ma'am and priyanka ma'am for taking initiative for this as all as always so thank you so much all the best thank, thank you ma'am uh, thank you very much madam for your kind words and uh, your uh, your support is always uh, be an inspiration for us to uh, arrange su such programs again and again uh, so with the permission uh, of our azgar madam uh, ma'am shall i uh, move to so, yes sure sure okay ma'am thank you uh, so as all good things come to an end in the life so is this webinar on behalf of modern education society college of engineering I Mrs Priyanka Bagul take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks to those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this webinar on career options and opportunities for electronic gra electronics graduates organized by Department of Electronics and Te Telecommunication Engineering in association with Student Developments and Placement Cell MES uh, MES COE a special thanks to our today's speaker Mr Ranjit Ranjit sir 
who enlightened everyone present here by sharing his knowledge and experience sir you touched upon all the cuts and corners of electronics fields i feel that our students are very fortunate to get to know about almost all the aspects of their career at the right time i would like uh, i would like to extend my gratitude towards our college management principal dr s s sarode sir vice principal dr m p dare madam uh, for uh, for their uh, enthusiastic support uh, this webinar wouldn't possible uh, without the support of dr p p uh, mane madam head department of electronics and telecommunication and dr a c mitra sir dean student development and placement cell mes coe last but not not the least our heartfelt thanks to our students to uh for their participation and without whom this webinar wouldn't be a success thank you thank you very much students for uh, for your uh, participation and uh, ranjit sir thank you very much for being uh, here and spending your valuable time with us thank you very much thank you thank you ma'am and uh, good uh, luck to all one announcement like turn on all of you please turn on your cameras for the group photo for the group We request all of you to turn on your camera, please. just a moment thank you very much all of you thank you thank you sir thank you mane ma'am thank you thank you yogita thank you so end the meeting now <laughs>